What's up, attackers? Kirk here at the beach in sunny San Diego. Now, many of you know that our company is based here in America's finest city, but did you know there are many other gaming companies that call San Diego their home? In this new series, we take a look at a few of these companies that hail from Southern California. Today we're going to take a look at Juggernaut Games. Now Juggernaut Games has been in the business for just over three years, and their small team is hard at work on their first title, Starcrawlers. Starcrawlers is a sci-fi dungeon, well, I should just let them tell you about it. The first title we're working on is Starcrawlers, it's a sci-fi RPG dungeon crawler. Starcrawlers is a lot of things, but uh, I think it could be best described as a science fiction uh, dungeon crawling RPG. A kick-ass sci-fi RPG. There's elements of puzzle solving, uh, exploring your environment, uh, finding loot, uh, accomplishing missions. Star Crawlers has been an exciting project to work on. Um, I grew up playing first-person dungeon crawlers, um, and I've always enjoyed those a lot. And I think doing a new one has been really great, but then also, um, I also love sci-fi, right? So putting those together has been a lot of fun. We're big fans of old games from the 90s, because that's when we grew up. So the opportunity to sort of bring it back around and to expose that to a new generation who maybe hasn't seen it before has been really exciting. We came up with the idea for a sci-fi dungeon crawler. We were looking at a smaller side project to do and Asa had done some sketches for a dungeon crawler and we were like, how can we make this different? How can we break the mold on what other dungeon crawlers are doing? Because it's kind of a pretty static genre. So you get fantasy tropes and there's goblins and orcs and all that jazz in there. And we said, how can we do something different? And Asa did some sketches for the environment that turned it into a sci-fi environment. And when we started pursuing that, we saw that we could take it in all kinds of different directions that we couldn't do if we were sticking with traditional fantasy. The best thing about Star Crawlers is the different characters that you can get and the leveling them up. And for me personally, I like building stuff. So in this case, you build your team. And right now we have these four characters, but with the stretch goals and different things like that, we want to add all these other characters to the game. You'll be able to hire them and they'll keep leveling up and you'll get new equipment for them until you finally have this crew of really cool people and you'll just get to choose which ones you want for certain missions. The aesthetic we've created has been really unique in that it creates a lot of uh, situations for gameplay to be drastically different from a lot of other things you've seen. So uh, providing opportunities for, you know, psychic warfare and, uh, you know, uh, hacking attempts on technology. So having sort of this science fiction technology um, aesthetic really allows us to play a lot in a, in a different pool than maybe what you're used to seeing in the genre. Uh, so what's your favorite part about Star Wars? Um, the environment art. <laughs> Um, the, the classes we have starting out are really interesting um, with a hacker and the, the, psych, the force hacker. Um, and I think once we get more into the combat system overall, just how classes play with each other, that's gonna, that's gonna be really cool to test just back and forth. But enough about their pride and joy star crawlers. Let's talk about who Juggernaut Games is, why their office is filled with toys, and why they call San Diego their home sweet home. We're based in San Diego because we came from a lot of larger companies that were in the area. A lot of us have worked together at other companies, and we were in between jobs. We got together, we said, hey, let's try and do this project on our own. And that's how Juggernaut got formed in the first place. I've lived in San Diego for almost, tw almost 20 years now. And uh, I can't imagine myself living anywhere else, to be honest. Um, I mean, between the weather, the food, um, all of the things that San Diego has to offer, um, it's really hard to see myself living anywhere else. It just has everything. It's, and it still feels like a small town despite it being so big. Um, I love San Diego. I actually grew up here. Uh, two years old, moved from Wisconsin. So San Diego is all I know. Yeah, I know I'm supposed to like the Packers, and that's about it. <laughs> San Diego is an interesting place uh, for game development. Um, we have a long history here in San Diego, and it has been one of the hotspots um, for game development. In the recent years, that's kind of gone down because we've had a lot of large companies fail. But because a lot of those large companies failed in San Diego, a lot of smaller companies have started up. So now what we're seeing is there are still a few large companies like Rockstar, SOE, SEA still in town, you know. But the other thing that we have is a lot of indie companies starting in San Diego, and that's really exciting. The name Juggernaut Games, um, we came up with that because when we started out, we were four people in my living room, and we thought, what's a name that will encapsulate us being a really small scrappy company and a juggernaut is a giant unstoppable crushing force 
and four dudes in a living room is not a giant unstoppable crushing force. So we thought it was ironically appropriate to be Juggernaut. My favorite part about working at Juggernaut is how creative we can all be um, individually and together as a team. So we're all in our own little areas, wearing multiple hats and doing you know what we do best. So environment artist, I'm, I'm creating the world essentially, and, and a lot of that is me gathering the resources to make it look how I want it to look. And you know, having everyone else you work with agree with you is kind of satisfying. You know, like we all you know, kind of trust each other's vision. Favorite part of the job is really um, the variation in all the different uh, characters you create. So, you know, it, it really, you really, one of the great things about being an animator is you add a lot of personality to a static image. So, you know, something that starts out in just sort of a regular, boring old pose, you give it a real personality, you make it feel heavy, you make it feel light and kind of quick. It really depends, and that's what makes it a lot of fun. Um, working on Jug Juggernaut has been really great, um, partly because it's such a small team and working sort of in indie development allows us all to have more input into the game. So uh, that's been really cool. Like instead of working at a big company where you're just part like one cog of a larger machine and you just do your little part of it, we all have our hats in all different areas and it allows us to have a lot more ownership over the game. Every day I get to come to work and work on games and I get to work with an amazing group of people in a really tight environment. It's very creative, it's very freeform, there's a lot less stress in some ways than working at a larger company, and there's a lot more stress and pressure than working at a large company, but it's enjoyable. So that's Juggernaut Games and their pride and joy, Starcrawlers. A special thanks to everyone at Juggernaut for letting us take an inside look at their company. Go check them out on their Kickstarter campaign, which is running now, and of course on their website, juggernaut-games.com, to find all the information you'll ever need. We end our trip with some fun because, come on, it's a gaming company after all. As the holder of the Mooch Room, I have complete control of the floor and no one else may speak if you don't obey that society just breaks down completely what are we looking at on your desk here it looks like home it's very it's homey it's very important to to have a workspace that you feel comfortable in so that involves bringing pretty much everything from home that your wife won't let you keep uh, to the office you're kind of known as the office bullshitter yes yes I am <laughs> so tell us a little bit about that um, I I like to make up stories uh, what about the milk bones uh, we feed those to our interns. Wait, no, we can't say that. We can't say that, can we? Producer? Every time you go to Benihana, you just say it's your birthday because then you get a free picture and free ice cream at the end. Exactly. I mean, you, it pays off. That was actually my birthday, but I should try that sometime. <laughs> Boba Boba Island is the greatest game that we're going to make. I also like to make up games. Hey guys, Kirk here, and welcome to MOTAC's first impressions of the Elder Scrolls Online PvP. PvP is hopefully just how you expect it, a wild, crazy slaughter fest with blood, murder, meat, fire, and trebuchets all over the place. There is a lot to take in on your first trip to Cyrodiil. You'll be going through the menus, figuring out what your faction owns, where the nearest keep battle is, where you should fast...